Well, as parents, not only do we not want our kids to be bullied, we don't want our kid to be that bully. And we know the damage those words can cause. It even can lead to suicide. There's been seminars, classroom discussions, even national town halls to prevent bullying. Well, now we have a poem. News of this silly little story quickly spread through the school and I earned my first nickname, Pork Chop. To this day, I hate pork chops. I'm not the only kid who grew up this way. Surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme about sticks and stones. As if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, and we got called them all. So we grew up believing no one would ever fall in love with us. That we'd be lonely forever. Wow. And in just a couple of days, more than two and a half million of you have clicked on YouTube to hear Shane's poem. He joins me live from Vancouver, Canada. Shane, I, I mean, you point out that you were bullied. Is that what compelled you to write this poem? Or is it more of everything you've observed about bullying lately that compelled you to do it? I think for the most part it's a lot of what I've observed from bullying. I just know that there's a lot of people out there who who struggle with this and, and you know and even just broaching the subject sometimes can be a bit of a trial and so for me it was really important to give people something a jumping off point where they could really sort of start talking about it. And just to put it in perspective, um, all you have to do is Google the word bullying, Shane, and the word epidemic comes right up there with it. 160,000 kids miss school every day because they're scared to go. I mean, that's enough to fill Wrigley Field four times. So, Shane, as someone who was bullied and now has such a powerful voice, what do you say to those kids? Uh, just just to recognize, you know, that there is that connectivity between all of you, you know, it's like you're not the only one going through this. I know when, when you, you're feeling bullied or when you're getting bullied, often it feels like you're alone, like you're the only one that's going to be suffering through that. And bullying is such a fear-based phenomenon where, you know, if, if you see someone who's being bullied, our, our immediate reaction is to not to do anything just based on the fear that their bully then becomes our bully. Um, so a lot of the times it's, it's quite a paralyzing effect. So your bullying word was pork chop. I was made fun of because I wore a brace for scoliosis and I won't even say what I was called. It brings back horrible memories. Kim, uh, Doug, both of you bullied. Yes. What was your situation? Mine was just uh, some girls, the mean girls in the school. Yeah. That, you know, I didn't fit in the box. I wasn't an attractive young girl. I didn't have, I wasn't a cheerleader. I wasn't involved in all, I played the viola. I was an orchestra. And, you know, I was just an odd bird. I was creative. I was loud. And I didn't fit the mold that I think a lot of young girls especially and young boys feel like they've got to fit into. And for me, I mean, I, I grew up, my parents were old school, salt of the earth people. And when I was bullied, uh, my mom just said, go back. She knocks you out. You knock her out. And she'll never bully you again. And that happened. But today, Kira, I think we, we face more, um, more of it than ever with social media, with Facebook, with Twitter. It's horrible. It, it's scary to know yeah. what our kids are facing. Plus, they're exposed to so much more violence and so much more um, name-calling. And, and, and well, it's easy to bully, too, when correct. you can go online. You and don't even have to it. say who right. you are, and then you see it. Doug, you had an issue, too. Yeah, uh, this, this is a tough conversation for me because I have daughters, and I don't want to tell my daughter to go get into a fight and she gets scratched in the face or her right. hair is pulled out forever and ever. But, yeah, even me, you know, and I, I guess probably if you look back, I was probably considered one of the cooler kids. But in, in the middle school, I had a guy that literally just picked on me every single day. And I was told the tried and true method is to stand up to him, to, to confront him. And I actually did this, and I never had the problem again. But you're exactly right. It's hard to give that same advice in this day and time because it's much different right now. I think all I can do as a father is to give my kids as much love and try to build up their self-esteem as much as possible, and I think that's the way to go. Well, I love the impact that, Shane, your, your poem is having. Let's listen to another uh, one of our favorite parts, if you don't mind. And if you can't see anything beautiful about yourself, get a better mirror. Look a little closer. Stare a little longer. Because there's something inside you that made you keep trying despite everyone who told you to quit. You built a cast around your broken heart inside of yourself. You signed it. They were wrong. Yeah. 
They were wrong. Powerful. Look how successful everybody is now, including you, Shane. I'm curious uh, how those words have impacted people and what they've said to you. The response has been, uh, I, I can't even describe the kind of letters that I'm getting from people who, you know, from, from mothers, from fathers, from, you know, young children who are, who are, you know, facing another day at school of this kind of torment. And, you know, there, there are letters from people that are, um, you know, describing the situation that they're in and, and how, you know, something like this very simple project is, you know, helping them get through that next day. Shane, thank you so much. And you can watch uh, Shane's entire poem uh, on our website, hlntv.com slash raisingamerica.